Hey everyone, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and today we're going to take a look at some crystal balls. Uh, I wrote a blog post about this recently using crystal balls as kind of a magnifying glass to enhance the in intensity and potentially the penetration of your light. Um, so how does it work? We've got a couple different balls here. We've got an 80 millimeter, 100 millimeter, 120 millimeter. And they all kind of do the same thing as light kind of travels into one end it gets focused down as it travels out again it gets focused down again so you can kind of see where you get kind of a focal point just about an inch like a little less than an inch right bef behind the ball and this is true for any any of the sizes you get that focal point it's just that the bigger the size the more light it's going to you know entrap in here and more light that's going to get focused so you get more intensity but as you go to the bigger size, obviously it's harder to handle, it's heavier, it's expensive, you don't want to drop it on your foot, you don't want to drop it on the ground. Um, so I found I liked the 100 millimeter the most. It kind of fits in your hand well, easy to move around. So you can kind of see this, we can measure, take a couple measurements. I've got the 10 Mars solar power meter, just as a quick check. And you can kind of see, if I'm you know trying to read this light that's over off to the side, you know you're not seeing you're not seeing much intensity but even if we take this crystal ball and we find the focal point for it you know you might start to see that intensity jump up just from a basic light that I'm using using on the side so you know this this works true for for any light you know sunlight you have to be careful around because you could burn yourself um, but it's true for for pretty much any light it'll enter and focus it down um, so that's a cool, cool thing. Then we can look at kind of our red lights and see how this works. You know, an important thing is, you know, this, this kind of method works best for lights that you're already some distance away. Like if you're standing six inches away, that's kind of the standard where they say, okay, you want to be six inches away, be out of, outside of the, the magnetic field for a lot of these lights. Then if you're putting a ball in between you, you know, that's, that's okay. And you can kind of focus down to help target particular spots and get focus intensity. And maybe you don't want to hold it there for very long because you're having a higher amount of intensity on a single spot. So you kind of do, you know, whatever, 20, 30 seconds across. And it's just something to kind of play around with. Like there's no scientific studies that say using a crystal, you know, I've never seen a scientific study that uses a crystal ball. It's just a clever little hack. That said, you know, a lot of, a lot of, you know, the lights that Gemba Red uses, I'm more of a fan of lights that you can use closer to the body. There's less magnetic field to worry about. There's, you know, there's not much EMFs to worry about, so you can kind of hold it close to the body. And that's already kind of the best way to use it. If you try to add a ball between you and a panel that you're already ideally using pretty close, like, you're, you're actually kind of detracting from the usage, unless you really want to focus in on one spot. So like any panels you know, or pads that you use, already use close to the body, they're already optimizing kind of that intensity and you're getting the full kind of effect of all the LEDs. You can look at a blog post I did about like the contact method versus if you're further away, you know, you have more kind of divergent beams and you have your skin kind of reflecting some of the light too. So that's where you kind of lose out on intensity. So ideally you're gonna, gonna reach for something that you're already going to use some distance away, right? So like Gemba Red Beam's a good example. We'll take a quick look at the new Gemba Red Oomph. And uh, so here's a good example. We've got the beam set up. The distance isn't going to be super important, but we're going to take a look. You know, maybe this is about, you know, five or six inches, and you might be able to see, uh, you know, 20, it should be around 20s, 20-ish. So then if we take the ball and try to hold everything steady and try to aim it over, get it kind of focused down, you're probably seeing it jump up significantly or it could be maxing out if it says kind of a zero and an L. So I see it, it's jumping up to like over, at least over a hundred is what I can see. So, so even just holding it like that, you kind of, kind of see it jump up. Here I'm just holding it steady, and you know it's reading what's reading, just by dropping the ball in between. It's focusing in that light, so 
you get potentially, you know, more intensity down to a much more narrow kind of spot. So you kind of see it's kind of much brighter on the center part of my hand now. So that's, that's you know, that's kind of the clever hack with it, is you can, can kind of get this ball in between, you know, yourself and your light and, and really, really try to get, get that going. So, you know, you can be, you know, about, you can eyeball it and get to kind of the focal point or, you know, you can kind of just press your hand right in because you know that all those rays are already converging. So if you're, you know, you can kind of just press it into the skin and the, that helps kind of compress the layers of the skin and help with that penetration. Or, you know, you can try to find that one little focal spot. But it's hard if you already have an array of LEDs, you're not always going to get a very clean looking spot. Like, you know, if you hold it up to the sun or if you hold it up to a, a single light bulb, you get one nice little clean spot. But with these you get a bunch of little spots. Um, and the same thing goes, you know, for bigger panels too. This is our new Gemba Red Oomph. We'll turn it on. Nice mix of uh, 660, eight, uh, 630, and 850. It's a nice little blend of, of lights. And then uh, again, we can kind of hold it up here you know, for this demonstration, the distance doesn't matter as long as I hold it kind of steady. Uh, you're going to see some number, maybe. Maybe it's right around 50. Well, I don't know if you'll see it. So, if it's right around 50, we put this in between. Bring it up to the focal point. So, that should be a pretty bright spot that I've found. So, not sure if you're even going to see any of this, but I can take a quick reading. Where's my spot? Yeah, yeah it's jumping up almost. It's jumping all over, but I, I saw it jump up to almost 190, 180. So, really depends on how steady I'm holding it and where where I'm catching the the focal point. So again, you can kind of see, you know, all these bigger spots, like these big bright spots, you know, because it's not all converging. It's all you know, lights coming from kind of different angles all around, but they're all kind of being narrowed down to some spots on the other side. So you can kind of still catch, you know. You can kind of still see how it's all kind of focused and overlapping as opposed to, you know, if you just have your skin, you know, that's perfectly fine. That's the normal way to do it. You get great results. This is just kind of a little hack. Play around with, see if you, you know, if you, if you like the results, if you want to, you know, play around with it, see how much more intensity you get out of it with different types of light meters. See if you can get, you know, feel a difference, then it's a pretty good hack. So. That's about it. So I recommend, I like this 100 millimeter crystal ball. I'm not too particular about what kind of ball, you know, there's different crystal balls. There's, uh, uh, you know, K9 or K5 crystal. There's kind of more like photography grade crystals. Like I would, you know, I would kind of go for that, but it's just, you know, just a glass sphere, you know, nothing too special. You don't have to get too picky about the quality or the type of glass or the type of ball so just a ball it's clear I don't see any bubbles or inclusions or anything so that's it so I hope this uh, you enjoyed this uh, it's an interesting kind of experiment I am not sure exactly the real world uh, applications yet but uh, we'll see something to, to think about to play around with understand more about optics and you know the lenses that we use in lights you know that you know we know we talk about beam angle and things like that that's you know this is kind of another consideration so it's interesting to kind of look at different types of lenses different types of magnification and how you can use this all to kind of kind of tweak your your red light therapy experience so thanks for watching and i'll we'll catch you next time